Classical Conversation Studios presents Refining Rhetoric with CEO Robert Bortons, a podcast where faith, business, politics, and classical education meet. Join us as we use the classical tools of rhetoric to seek truth in every arena of life. Hello, this is your host, Robert Bortons, for my podcast, Refining Rhetoric. And today we are doing a special election podcast and talking about Christians and voting and why it's so important. Uh, If you weren't aware, uh, the 2022 United States elections are held on Tuesday, November 8th. uh, And I need you to be registered to vote, first of all. Um, But during this midterm election year, there are all 435 seats up for election in House of Representatives, which is they get elected every two years, and all 435 seats are always up for re-election. And there are 35 of the 100 seats in the Senate will be contested as well. So those are rotated. You're elected in the Senate for a six-year term. And unless there's some special elections that uh, basically a third of them get elected on uh, every single year or every single election cycle. So according to myfaithvotes.org, roughly one in three Christians do not regularly vote, uh, which is upwards of 20 million plus, and another 15 million Christians are not even registered to vote. And that is a big problem because we are in a country who elects its representatives. So it'd be one thing if we had a king or appointed ruler, but in the U.S. we can elect our officials. And I go back to 1 Samuel 8, 19 through 21, and go back to Israel when they demanded a king. But the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but there shall be a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And when Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Obey their voice and make them a king. Samuel then said to the men of Israel, Go every man to his city. And so we know that Saul got appointed king, and then Israel had to listen to what he said. They got what they asked for. And uh, shortly thereafter, they uh, start asking for the heads of the people who uh, said, let's have a king, because they did not like how Saul was ruling over them. And so as Christians, we know that ultimately, uh, you know, God is our king. Jesus is uh, serving at the right hand, and uh, you know, all knees shall bow, and all tongues will confess his lordship. Yeah, and so in Genesis chapter 2, 15, let's go back there. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. And of course, that uh, dominion mandate has passed on through us as sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. Um, And so we need to compare. So what's our responsibility if we have a king versus what's our responsibility if we live in a republic? And there's really three forms of government in the Bible. There's the family government, the church government, and the civil government. And of course, uh, the father is the head of the family government, uh, serving the wife and the kids uh, to make sure that they are raised and loved in the admonition of the Lord. Uh, the church government is responsible for taking care of uh, you know, orphans and widows, uh, for making sure that Christians are uh, behaving as Christians ought to behave, as well as uh, leading the day-to-day of the church. And the civil government, which is responsible for justice. And we've seen in the Bible and Proverbs, they talk about what good government looks like and what a bad government looks like. And so as uh, citizens of the United States, we have an opportunity to uh, elect our civil government and elect officials who will uh, you know, follow the Bible as their guide and follow the uh, truths in that uh, because it is the word of God. And so we have the opportunity to do that. And over 20 million Christians aren't partaking in that. And so if you think that we have uh, elected officials who are not following the word of God, uh, be it uh, Republican or Democrat, or most likely both uh, in many instances, you know, why is that? Well, part of the reason is Christians aren't doing our duty, our dominion mandate of uh, making sure that uh, 
we're cultivating and keeping the earth, and part of that is electing good civil government. There are three kind of common objections that I hear. Um, one, I don't know who's running, or I don't know the issues. And then a third one is, I forgot. And so all of these are um, self-governing, family government issues, right? I don't know who's running. Well, that's because you haven't done the research. Uh, you haven't uh, made an effort to do that. Um, you know, I don't know the issues or, you know, I don't know which way would be better. Um, we'll have, what are your main issues? And then what of those issues, where does the Bible align? And then you need to align yourself to the Bible. And then I forgot, and that's just a discipline thing. Um, you know, most states have some early voting or absentee voting. And then of course there's the day of, and that day of, I mean, you need to put it into your schedule, like go to your calendar right now uh don't wait and uh put uh you know november 8th down uh figure out what time you want to vote um you know put that down in your calendar put the address of where you vote you can look that up if you don't know it put that in uh so it's on your calendar you know give yourself maybe an hour uh, maybe more depending on where you live uh but uh get it done get it done during the day when there's less people voting instead of after work um, and make a plan uh, with your local community, with your church. Um, you know, if you have children, to maybe watch them and people rotate uh, so that uh, everyone that you know can go and vote. In 1 Corinthians 4, 2, it says, Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. So in the United States, I believe that uh, we have been given a great opportunity from our founding documents, um, not perfect, but uh, they looked at what had happened throughout the world and what governments worked well and what governments didn't and uh, which ones aligned uh, with biblical truths. And they gave us an opportunity to uh, vote on our civil servants. And so, you know, we must uh, prove faithful because we've been given that trust and proving faithful means doing the work to uh, do the research and to go and vote. In Titus 1.7, it says, For a bishop must be blameless and in, as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quit temper, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money. And so that is someone who would be in charge of the church government and uh, part of that system. Um, and remember, we have three forms of government and good government. We have family governance, church governance, and civil governance. Um, so while that's not necessarily a standard for our civil government, um, you know, it is a good standard for us to apply, um, you know, that uh, is the person running blameless. Is he going to be a good steward of our resources? Is he self-willed, you know, quick-tempered? These things are ways for us to judge the person's character and help see who might uh, be in alignment with uh, biblical truths. And in Luke 12, 42 and 44, it says, the Lord answered, who then is faithful and a wise manager, whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he'll put him in charge of all his possessions. So as uh, servants of the Lord, you know, he's appointed us to be faithful and wise managers. And in the United States, we have that opportunity uh, to vote. For most of us, it's uh, every other year. And so it is just super important that you know we follow this command to be good stewards and to do our part. And so, you know, you can uh, definitely you know go to candidate forums, email them, go uh volunteer uh for someone you think uh is a potential faithful steward of what the Lord has given us here in the United States. You know, go out and vote and then make sure you got a plan to vote on uh the 8th or earlier. If you can get in earlier, it's always good to get it get it over with that way on the 8th you can go and uh, help someone else vote or uh, you know know that uh, your stewardship has already been fulfilled and if you want more resources i would encourage everyone to go to myfaithvotes.org um, they have a list of great resources and will help you um, in your research and helping you understand uh, uh, what we'll be voting on and, and where the different people stand on these issues uh, this year. So, you know, as we always talk about those uh, core habits of grammar, you know, the first thing we need to do is uh, 
really um, the naming, no the appropriate word, uh, you know, voting uh, that we have a representative republic, and that is our responsibility. Um, comparison, you know, we don't have a king. We got to elect our people. So that's a responsibility that we have to do it well. And in the five canons of rhetoric, uh, you know, style, choosing the best way to present those thoughts, you know, go find um, those who are running that uh, will support uh, what the Bible says about government and the separation of family government, church government, and civil government. And if we do that, uh, we can have a nation that honors the Lord instead of honoring itself. If you have any friends that uh, might not vote regularly or you don't know if they're registered to vote or not sure if they're going to be voting this year, please share this episode with them. Um, It is so vital that uh, we get the word out. If uh, all of us just take some time to commit to voting ourselves and commit to making sure two or three friends vote as well, uh, we can really change those numbers around and make sure that uh, Christians are not abdicating their responsibilities to others, but in obedience to all the Lord has called us to do. So please go share this episode now uh, with two or three friends so that you guys can make a plan to vote together. God bless. Thank you for listening to Refining Rhetoric with Robert Bortons. Want more? Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss an episode. You can also follow us on social media to continue the conversation and visit classicalconversations.com forward slash rhetoric to find out how you can join a local homeschool community.